Dear First Baptist Church Denby members and guests, to God be the glory. Thank you for participating in our first online learning tool. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. Please feel free to print the slides for future reference and email your comments and suggestions to our webmail at technology at fbcdenby.org. Please note that versions prior to Microsoft PowerPoint 2007 will not have the sound feature. However, additional notes have been added to the presentation for this reason. Your mouse will navigate you through the presentation so that you can view the slides at your own pace. Now let's begin our learning. The Internet is an open forum that is still being pioneered with limitless possibilities. Although there are many effective antivirus software, firewalls, and anti-spyware to protect our information and computers, there are things that you should know about Internet usage that will also help you make informed decisions while exploring the World Wide Web. It is our hope to offer this guide to you as a tool to assist and protect you in your journey to spread the Word of God through technology and to represent yourselves as heirs to the Kingdom of God in a manner that is pleasing to Him. In all that we do online, whether it is an email, a business communication, or professional and social networking, we should always be aware of our surroundings and take every precaution to ensure that we and the people we care about are informed and protected while on the Internet. Types of Cyber Crimes and Personal Safety Concerns the next few slides will define the various types of threats out there and introduce ways to protect yourselves and your personal information. I think it is important for us to understand what the threats are, how they apply to us individually, so that we will know how to take precautions and govern ourselves accordingly. Some of these terms may be familiar to you, and hopefully this tutorial will give you a better understanding of them. With that being said, our first term is identity theft, which happens when someone obtains enough information about another person to pretend to be them and access financial information to buy products and services. We are very familiar with this term nowadays. Next term, cyberbullying is bullying an individual by email, a social network, a blog, or other online communication method. Cyberstalking, however, begins with online harassment, such as the continuous sending of unwanted or threatening emails or files to the victim, posting negative messages in a chat room, or pretending to be the victim to sign them up for pornographic or other offensive email newsletters publicizing the victim's home address or telephone number. These threats often include threats of murder and other violence. Can we protect ourselves? Although there are no definite ways to protect ourselves against cyberbullying, cyberstalking, and really any other online crimes, we can still take certain precautions to limit the chances of being a victim of personal safety threats in particular. Here are a few tips. Safety for adults. I say practice what we preach to our children. Be cautious and discreet when you are in locations where you are communicating with strangers, such as chat rooms, blogs, discussion groups. Always remember that they are strangers. You are strangers to each other and you don't know who you are communicating with. Do so therefore, do not include any personal information 
such as telephone numbers or addresses, and never, never respond to insults or other harassing comments you receive online. Safety for children. Experts agree the best way to protect the children is to stay in touch with them as they are on the internet. Also, many internet service providers offer parental controls which will limit the websites that children can surf to that may not be for their age group. And the parent has control over that. Also, another way is to use a computer that is in a family room, such as a kitchen or a living room. The bedroom is not the best place for a child to be on a computer. Some children will stay up all night long if they could on the computer. Not the best place. You want it to be in a room where there is traffic, where you can periodically keep in touch with them touch bases. Make sure they know to not give personal information without your approval first. This information includes addresses, telephone numbers, and the name of the school they are attending. Because if a criminal knows the name of the school where your child is attending, chances are the criminal is going to be able to locate your child. Also, instruct them to tell you or a teacher if anyone solicits information from them or a meeting with them. It should be a teacher that they trust and you can ask them, and I ask mine all the time, which teachers do you like, which teachers do you trust? And it is also a good idea to have their passwords not to invade their privacy. I realize I have young adults who may be an audience to this tutorial. It is not to invade the privacy. Disclosure and honesty is the only way that your parents can help you. It's what I tell my children. It's the only way I can help them if they're honest with me. Moving forward. Use privacy settings whenever possible when you are logged into a social network or other professional network and limit the amount of personal information that you post online. Always make sure you are in a secure connection. You should see https colon slash slash in the web address when you are logged in and then the actual web address. Games, apps, uh, Zodiac apps, for example, can take you out of a secure connection, for instance, in Facebook. It, if this happens, immediately log out and then back in. Quick fix. Always keep your privacy settings updated at all times. Not that long ago, Facebook had an issue where they updated their website and Unknowingly, all of the privacy settings for the individual subscribers were reset to the default settings. So we had to go back in and reset. Remedy also, do it periodically, just as a precaution. The next slide that you will see is going to uh, talk about, introduce you to ways to create effective, stronger passwords. And then we're going to move on to more terms that we need to cover for the online types of online crimes. Types of cyber crimes and personal safety concerns continued. The following terms fall under the category of unauthorized access, use, and computer sabotage. Our first term, hacking, which may be familiar to you, 
is the unauthorized computer access and use to commit cyber crimes and mayhem. It is the act of breaking into another computer system to steal data, sabotage a computer system, or perform some other illegal act. Our next term, malware and computer viruses. These are dangerous software that are installed on a victim's computer without their knowledge. They are designed to harm your computer systems. The most common are computer worms. These are malware that are usually in an email attachment. Trojan horses. You may have heard of these. These are also malware. But these can be an application or some other software that has to be downloaded to your computer. So we do know that we cannot open every email, you've heard it before, and you cannot download everything from uh, questionable sites. You only want to do downloads from sites that you are familiar with, you've downloaded before, they're reparable companies. Our next slide is actually a link to the semantic security check where you can check your computer for free at the semantic site which they, they are actually the creators of the Norton virus software and they will offer you different packages also at different prices now there are other software antivirus software anti malware software that are free you can um, contact us if you are looking for something like that or if you would like any recommendation. I mean, we have McAfee, you have Norton. There are so many different types of antivirus software that are effective. You can't really say one is better than the other. So if you'd like any suggestions, just drop us a web mail and someone will get back to you as soon as possible and have an answer for you. Next, online auction fraud, which occurs when a buyer does not receive the product that was purchased at the auction, such as eBay, or it is not as it was advertised by the seller. This happens often. eBay in particular, they are able to control who they let on their sites and how to get rid of sellers like these who lie about their product. However, nothing can stop them from signing back on and setting up a new account with a different username. So be aware of that. Uh, usually the good sellers, they have a good reputation and eBay has a system that where you can identify the good sellers from the bad sellers or the new sellers. Next we have internet offer scams. We'll start with phishing and spoofing. This is making it seem that an email or a website is from another source than what it is to gain personal information. Usually the email is from eBay, Microsoft, Citibank, or some other well-known legitimate organization. Spear phishing. These are emails that are targeted to specific individuals who have an association with a certain company or association. The email may also include personal information, information that is familiar to the victim, such as the victim's name or hobbies. There were several out, several emails in particular out. We had the Nigerian letter, which you may have heard about, where a Nigerian bank needed the victim to send, to deposit a certain amount of money in a certain bank account. A lot of people apparently lost money behind this Nigerian letter. Also, this was one also that I had received, the Microsoft sweepstakes fraud. I was devastated. What I did was I googled a paragraph and it, it, it turned up on a blog. Apparently I wasn't the only target. 
So I was devastated, needless to say. I did not win the $50 million from Microsoft. Um, the newest threat is an email or a phone call from the IRS requesting that you verify sensitive information about your tax return. The IRS will never email or call you for personal information. They will send all of their requests through the U.S. Postal Service. So if you, it, it's just started recently, so if you happen to come across an email like that, not that you want to open every email anyway or make every, open every attachment, just be aware that it's out there and the IRS will not contact you for information, not personal information, by email or, or by calling you. If you. My motto, if you did not initiate the communication, then it is not real, it is a scam. The next two slides, as a matter of fact, are the Google results for the two letters, the Nigerian letter and the Microsoft sweepstakes fraud. And Microsoft was actually aware of the fraud and addressed the consumer concerns. Shopping online. Rules to live by. First rule, use a credit card instead of your debit card. The reason being, you won't have to pay more than $50 of fraudulent charges. Credit card payments can be withheld if there is a dispute with a store. But with a debit card, you will be liable for up to $500 in fraudulent charges if your card is stolen depending on when it was reported and the funds are taken directly from your personal account. Rule 2 always read the terms of service agreement before you buy since you can unknowingly sign up for a subscription or receive extra charges or fees. For instance there are some websites that require that you have a credit card on file and that you make a purchase for instance monthly these are real sites now if you're not aware of it if you did not read the terms of service in most cases your card will be billed x amount of dollars that you do not when you do not make a purchase for that month so you have the option every month you have to go in and opt out for that month this is normally with um, some of the clothing sites or specialized websites that offer specialized products. Rule 3 find out if the public Hi-Fi hotspot you are using is a secure connection. If not your information can be compromised over the networks. Uh, that's actually another tutorial dealing with Wi-Fi hotspots and how it happens and uh, maybe that's in the future but for now use hot it's okay to use hot Wi-Fi hotspots just as long as they are secure connections and you're familiar with using that particular hotspot number four use caution in buying digital assets such as books and musics online they can't be given away if they're downloaded to your personal account. Best thing to do is, for instance, like iTunes, they offer gift cards. Off anything for music, Amazon uh, offers gift cards for books. It's better to use a gift card. Or check with the company just to make sure that you can give the product away as a gift. Some sites, uh, I use graphic sites, uh, as long as I'm not selling the product I can use as much as I want. I can use it with whatever I want, any advertisement that I want as long as I'm not selling the graphic. Number five, 
be careful if you will purchase event tickets online and this is true some venues practice restricted ticketing they want to make sure that the cards are not stolen that the owner is in possession of the tickets and sometimes they will you will have to provide the credit card itself for entry into the event along with the receipt so be aware of that uh, in the next slide I'm just going to go over a few more a uh, few more tips on how to stay safe online and then we'll be finished our tutorial other ways to protect yourself while online this is the final slide for your guide to internet safety protect your social security number by not giving it out unless necessary monitor your credit report and watch your bills know what you're paying if you think there's any fraudulent activity report it immediately shred any documents that are sensitive information and watch your physical mail if you don't have a shredder sit there and start tearing paper it's important that you get rid of it and that someone cannot go into your trash and put together your documents people have been known to do that also be cautious and never click on a link in an email from an unknown source we talked about that secure your computer by updating your operating system regularly and using the most current security software you can schedule routine updates of your operating system in Windows it allow you to schedule your updates as well as with your your security software it is Norton I know McAfee will they allow you to go in and schedule whether it's three o'clock in the morning whether it's seven o'clock in the evening they'll allow you the same time to run your updates so there's no reason why you cannot keep your computer updated that's very important to keep your computer secure when you're out always safeguard your wallet portable computer and cellular phones use passwords on all of your electronic devices limit the sharing of disk USB drives and flash memory cards you want to do this because you can it accidentally carry a malware or some other virus from one computer to another so your your any virus software can also be used to scan your documents also if you're going to be using transferring documents on a disk or USB drive you'll want to scan them first also only download files from reputable sites we talked about that always open a new browser to log on to a website and immediately close the browser when you are logging out after you log out close the browser if you want to continue surfing open another browser when you're out using Wi-Fi when you're not using it turn off the Bluetooth and turn off the Wi-Fi it limits the access to your information um, a useful tip if you have a download a downloaded file that you are not sure that you want to install yet on your system it's a good idea to test it for viruses before you open it now you if you don't have uh, virus software there are websites um, I use one in particular www.virustotal.com it's a secure website where you can load the file there and it'll scan it for viruses before you download it to your computer uh, if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of the terms or if you would like any suggestions or any virus software or any particular sites that you would like to visit or about any downloads anything that we can assist you with please feel free to contact us at our webmail um, thank you for participating again in our online tutorial God bless and stay safe on the internet